Synology DSM 7.2.2 was released this past week, which is huge news considering the DSM 7.2.1 update was released close to a year ago. The new update has a bunch of bug fixes and security enhancements, which makes it an update that almost everyone should install at some point, except it wasn't only bug fixes and security enhancements. Of course, those are the bulk of the benefits to the update itself and is the main reason why at some point you should and most likely need to update to this version. But Synology actually removes functionality from the operating system as well. For a lot of people, this won't exactly be new news to you at this point, but Video Station has been removed from the Synology Package Manager and Synology Surveillance Station, Synology Drive, Synology Photos, and File Station have been impacted as well. Now there's a lot to unpack here. So we'll briefly discuss the actual negative changes in DSM 7.2.2 and then focus on what can happen in the future if Synology continues to go down this path and how it can impact you. Now Synology killing off Video Station is what I'd call bad news, but it's bad news for a select few of you. The bulk of people are using Plex, MB, or Jellyfin as their media server. And while the Plex package required an update, it will continue to function long-term. And for that reason, you might experience a few short-term annoyances but long term, everything will be fine. For those of you using Video Station, that's it. It's gone. Find a new alternative because you will no longer be able to officially use it if you update your NAS to any DSM version newer than DSM 7.2.2. And if you need help picking an option, I'll leave a link in the description for a video I did on Plex vs. MB vs. Jellyfin, as one of those will be your best option. Now, Synology has removed apps in the past, so this isn't exactly new, with the biggest probably being when they removed Photo Station and Synology Moments when upgrading from DSM 6 to DSM 7. But there was a replacement application named Synology Photos. For Video Station, they're actively pushing you to a third-party replacement, which is pretty interesting. I've said this in videos in the past, but I was never a Video Station user, though I worked with clients who were, and they opened my eyes to a group of users who didn't really want any of the functionality that Plex, MB, or Jellyfin provided and wanted simplicity. And for that reason, Video Station was a great option for them. For those people, you're out of luck, but it's not only Video Station that's gone. Synology also removed support for H.265, H.264, and VC1, which are all codecs which allow you to view different types of media from the NAS directly. This is how Surveillance Station, Synology Drive, Synology Photos, and File Station are impacted, as attempting to view or preview certain media in those formats is no longer supported, and the solution is to convert it to another format. Now, this is a massive change for Synology Photos because in prior versions of DSM, you would upload photos from any device to the application and they'd be viewable from just about any newer age device like iPhones and Android devices, but a web browser as well. Now you have to either upload the photo from a mobile device with the Synology Photos application or use a downloaded Synology Assistant on a PC to convert those files from the codec it was initially stored as to a codec supported in DSM 7.2.2. If you don't do this, the photos won't be viewable from the Synology Photos application. SpaceRex did a great video on this, and if you're seeing this video, you've probably seen that video, but if you haven't, I'll leave a link to it in the description. To summarize this, Synology is expecting client devices like phones and computers to have that specific codec in order to view or stream that type of media from the NAS moving forward and actually convert that media to a format the NAS supports. The point is you will no longer be able to view it from the NAS directly as you always did in the past. A pretty significant change where the workaround is basically more steps to get the same functionality as you've always had. Those codecs were used by Video Station, which is most likely the reason why it's gone, but this has a ripple effect because it impacts Synology Surveillance Station as well, which in my opinion, is the biggest hit outside of Video Station, even taking the Synology Photos changes into consideration. Since the H.264 codec is needed for Synology Surveillance Station and DSM no longer supports it, you need to install the Surveillance Video Extension Package. And if you do, all features related to H.264 will still work with Surveillance Station the way that it always has, but Surveillance Station only. So Drive, Photos, and File Station still won't be able to view that type of media without conversion. H.265 support, however, is impacted in a few different ways with Surveillance Station, with the main impact being for users that were using the NAS to conduct motion detection with H.265 video. If you were one of those people, 
you'll need to either offload it to your camera, assuming it supports it, or switch to a different format, which speaking honestly, probably isn't something you should do. H.265 is an enhancement over H.264, meaning that you can record roughly the same amount of footage at roughly the same quality for about half the usable storage space that H.264 uses. So if you're using H.265, don't switch back to H.264 unless you absolutely must, as you're either increasing the storage requirements needed to store the same amount of footage as you always have, or lowering the total number of days that you can store on your NAS, due to the larger file sizes you'll be working with to maintain the functionality you've always had. Now, most cameras have support for motion detection, but you'll have to take this into consideration when looking at cameras moving forward to ensure that they support certain features that Surveillance Station once supported. And throwing my subjective opinion in there, it's always easier to manage things in one location. So if you're moving from a central management to individual management on each camera for motion detection, it's going to be harder to implement and maintain. So quite honestly, this is a huge step back for Surveillance Station and makes it less user-friendly. Central management should always be the goal. And this change pushes you away from that into individual management. Now the changes are bad enough, but the bigger question we have to ask ourselves is why? According to the release notes, these changes are being implemented to reduce unnecessary resource usage on the system and enhance system efficiency. So let's take that at face value and give them the benefit of the doubt. For some of you, this could potentially improve the performance and reliability of your NAS device. But for most of you, this will have no noticeable impact on anything and just limits what you can use your device for and potentially hinders your actual usage on a day-to-day -day basis. If you were never using any of this functionality, there will be no noticeable usable impact. But if you were, conversion on a device that has support is the only real replacement. And if that's not an option, loss of functionality will occur. Which then naturally leads us to the question of what can improve resource usage on the system and enhance system efficiency. Considering it was a big enough goal for them that they removed an application that existed while hindering a few others. You can improve the performance and enhance system efficiency by either increasing the resources to make the baseline for the NAS lower than it currently is with the existing hardware hardware or run fewer applications on the NAS, either make the hardware better or run less software. If their goal was to improve existing hardware, I don't think they'd remove apps and services because that would entice you to buy a new device. So if you actually believe what they said in their release notes, this small update makes me feel like the existing NAS hardware from a processor and memory perspective will most likely be staying the same, meaning lower spec devices with possibly even smaller leaps from generation to generation than we've seen in the past, especially if the software will be scaled back. This was covered by Robbie over at NAS Compares in his video on upcoming Synology devices, which you should check out if you're interested in the hardware aspect as it's a great overview. I'll link it in the description. Now, if the hardware won't be improved drastically, this naturally points to limiting the actual applications you're running on your NAS. So there are a lot of applications that obviously can't go away, either because it's core functionality or applications that actually add value to users that would cause an uproar if they were removed. Hyper Backup, Synology Photos, Synology Drive, Snapshot Replication. These are apps that Synology would be stupid to get rid of, but NoteStation, Audio Station, why would they keep these if Video Station was arguably a better product than them and the goal is to increase system performance? You can say that it's because there are better third-party alternatives to Video Station, but there are for Note Station and Audio Station too. And I'm only using those two applications as an example, but there are other first-party applications that can go away as well. The point is that it's such a generic reason that you can apply it to practically any of their other applications as well, outside of a select few that Synology really needs to keep. Which then leads us to the next point, which is that there's a very good chance that performance is absolutely not the reason. And it's actually around costs. I was reading about this on Reddit when the DSM 7.2.2 update was released, so I didn't think or come up with this. But could it be that those codecs required a license that was baked into every Synology NAS and removing them saves license fees for Synology? Yeah, it is possible. But to me, that would mean they're starting to value their applications in terms of costs for maintenance, licenses, and improvements versus their return, and potentially attempting to limit them moving forward. Which, if this was the case, is something they probably never did. So let's go down that path for a second. 
If Synology is looking at their applications in terms of the operating expenses to either keep them or enhance them, they'll be allocating a certain amount from each NAS cell to the operating expenses for those applications or setting up a subscription service for certain applications, which if the codec was a cost issue, should have been an option for users because it would have been a transparent and honest reason for the removal. And I know plenty of people that would pay a subscription per year to keep things the way they always were. Similar to how you have to activate a free license for Active Backup for Business or a virtual DSM instance, the framework is there. They just didn't decide to go down that path. And honestly, I think that an honest and transparent approach would have been a better path forward rather than blaming performance because you can draw a lot of conclusions from that suggestion that Synology definitely doesn't want to imply. If costs are the real reason, it seems like they're trying to save face by using performance, which is a legitimate reason that consumers could potentially view as a positive, mainly because codecs are fairly misunderstood. We're making your NAS faster by removing something you won't actually use but every iPhone user actually uses it. They just don't have any idea what H.265 is, which is why an honest explanation with a potential subscription fee would have been a better approach. Now, do we want subscription services for basic functionality? No, we absolutely don't. But we live in a world where everything is developed and enhanced by recurring charges. And I don't think DSM will escape this new reality. It's just a matter of when, as the framework for it is already baked into applications like Active Backup for Business, where you have to activate a free license. So it's more about when rather than if. But coming out and saying that license costs is the reason for this change would have been a better approach in my opinion. And rather than flat out removing functionality that some users depend on, they could have offered the alternative they did and a subscription license for people who wanted to continue to use their NAS the way they always have. So let's summarize this. I have been a huge Synology fan for years. I don't think that's surprising, but it's not the only NAS operating system I've used. I created a video on DIY NAS operating systems to help explain some of the differences between them. And if this frustrates you, check it out because those are legitimate options you can use if you ever wanna replace DSM. But the overwhelming response I heard in the comments was that even peeking into that world was way too complicated for a lot of people. They just want something that works. And even though there isn't a perfect NAS operating system, for a lot of people, DSM was always fairly mindless. And for them, perfect. You buy a NAS device, it comes with the operating system, you configure it and can start to install your applications on top of it. Then you subscribe to your favorite YouTuber and watch a few videos from that other guy. The majority of people don't know what a BTRFS volume is, and that's what makes Synology DSM so good. You don't need to. You walk through the guide, it recommends the best overall setup from a storage pool and volume perspective, and you can start using it. I still believe that DSM is the best option for the majority of people, and explained in great detail why in this video. But one of the main selling points for DSM has always been their applications. I've done tutorials, comparisons, and even went as far as to rank Synology's best applications, and those videos generally have a lot of interest because that's what interests you. But this is the first time I've been slightly concerned with the direction Synology seems to be heading. And even though it's a small, small update in the grand scheme of things, to me, someone with absolutely no inside information who is attempting to draw conclusions from release notes, it speaks volumes and not necessarily in a good way. For these reasons, I think you need to start looking at your NAS differently. Does it function as a NAS the way you'd expect? If you had to remove all of the first party applications from it and use it as network attached storage, would you be happy? Are there third party applications you'd be willing to use with Docker? Or if you had to go down that route, would you just look at something like Unraid or TrueNAS where the same holds true there? If you objectively look at your usage and see that you're there for Synology's first party applications, realize that the good ones aren't going anywhere, but it's not crazy to think that someday you might have to pay a monthly or yearly fee for them. Hopefully that's not the case and only time will tell. So you don't have to start making drastic changes now and I don't want this video to come across that way. But I don't personally think there's a way to positively view this update in terms of what was removed and the way that it was removed. The bug fixes are great and necessary and it shows that Synology is committed to keeping DSM secure and reliable. 
but the features removed are what will ultimately determine how people view this update and more so what can and might be removed in the future if costs are the driving factor. But again, just one guy's thoughts. If you made it this far, thank you for watching. I'll see you guys next time.